welcome to our third week and another look at the latest and verified news from the world of air sports. I'm Regan Tetlow, this is Air Sports News, and we really hope you're all coping during these tough times. Let's have a look at what's going on in our world and in the sky. So our first news today comes from a discipline of air sports which is very close to my heart. Just a few days ago, the International Skydiving Commission and the Russian Parachute Federation announced after a huge discussion that they've decided to postpone the Mondial World Parachuting Championships until next year. The ISC Bureau and the Russian Parachute Federation have been in negotiations for over a month concerning the 2020 Mondial. An agreement states that the championships are to be moved to a new set of dates from the 7th of August to the 21st of August 2021. Events previously scheduled for 21 and 22 are now under review and decisions will be communicated at a later date. We now have a cancellation report from Germany where two days ago the paragliding Moselle Cup should have begun. The COVID-19 crisis hits also in this event. 85 pilots from 35 countries were forced to withdraw from the competition before it even started. However, pilots don't lose faith. More than 35 of them asked to leave their entry fees for Flo Morsell Open 21, which is now postponed to a new set of dates from the 27th of April to the 1st of May 2021. Organisers of the 16th FAI European Paragliding Championships in Serbia are still waiting with their decision, hoping that before the 19th of July, restrictions will be relaxed, allowing pilots to take part in the competition. We're keeping our fingers crossed for you guys. So both paragliders and skydivers are struggling because of the coronavirus. Last week we spoke with Masterclass Paraglider pilot Claudia Bukakov. This week, we had an opportunity to catch up with one of the greatest canopy piloting couples out there, Kurt and Jeannie Bartholomew, to see just how they're coping without competition. Tell me a bit how you've been coping with this COVID-19 crisis. We've been working out like 10 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm uh, still recovering from shoulder surgery, so I'm able to just put a lot of time and focus into that. So it's been good. Is, is there any jumping at all going on down in Florida? Uh, no, not really. Pretty much everybody's shut down. There are a couple Cessna drop zones that are still sending loads, in, I think in Jacksonville and kind of near Lake Wales maybe, but our home drop zone, Scott F. Sebastian, is not flying right now. Since it started, what have you missed? What competitions have come and gone or events for you? Um, so far, we've only missed the second FLCPA. Uh, as of now, that was supposed to be like a week or two ago. We got the first uh, FLCPA competition in of the year before everything shut down. That was in February. And it was awesome. It was a huge comp. Yeah. A lot of competitors. It was the biggest FLCPA ever. There was uh, almost 75 people. <laughs> now for anybody watching from different air sports that are not quite familiar with canopy piloting events and how we compete, can you give us a quick rundown of the three different competitions that we have before freestyle? Yeah, so we have uh, speed, distance, and zone accuracy. So distance is measured from a, a given entry gate. We just have to touch the water before the, before, somewhere before the entry gate. And then our, it's, we're basically just going as far as we can. Uh, speed is we run through a, a 70 meter carving course it's a 70 degree carving course as well. And there's five gates and um, the entry gate starts a, trips a sensor. So it starts the time. We trip a sensor on the exit gate, the fifth gate, and that stops our time. Fastest time is the best, obviously. And then zone accuracy, um, we drag our foot through the water uh, across four water gates. Then we pop up in the air and there's a, a pea gravel pit and there's a grid set up in there, and we're aiming for a one meter by two meter box. What would you say to any skydivers who are gonna be getting back in a plane in the next couple of months for the first time in you know, quite a long layoff? Yeah, you wanna start? I would say there's a lot of free seminars going online right now, trying to keep people current, giving a lot of great information. Seek out those seminars and keep yourself current in your mind so that when you get on that plane, you feel like you've never left. 
Great news comes to us from France. A few days ago, the FAI ratified a new ultralight world record. It was set by a father and son team. Colin and Louis Faha flew a straight line distance of 783.9 kilometers, crossing almost all of the country from east to west. They did it on the Scupper Microlite, manufactured by Air Creation. During this record flight, Colin and Louis spent almost nine hours in the air. Our next ultralight sensation comes from Sweden, where the Blackwing company set a new speed record for its category. Using the new model BW600RG aircraft, test pilots were able to maintain a speed of 219 knots, which is about 405 kilometers per hour. What makes this even more remarkable is that it wasn't just a one-off speed, but a constant average speed at the circle distance of 15 kilometers. The Blackwing aircraft is powered by a tuned Rotax engine with a horsepower of 141. A true monster in the lightweight category. So if we talk about speed in aviation, there is no better person to be interviewed than Red Bull pilot Luke Cepula from Poland. Last year he completed an amazing stunt of landing on a pier, and of course we cannot forget a few years ago that incredible flight under the bridge with none other than Martin Schonke. Now he admits to struggling because of the COVID-19 lockdown. Well, it had a massive influence on uh, pretty much anything I do. Uh, I haven't flown the Airbus since 27th of February, so it's way over two months now. Yeah, it's been quite hard. When I'm not flying commercially, I don't have enough money to fly the general aviation as well. I haven't had my aerobatic aircraft since uh, December. Uh, we are doing major avionics upgrade on the aircraft. Uh, we've put a set of uh, two G3X screens in it with the autopilot and yeah. The aircraft is amazing. I picked it up yesterday. Uh, we did two days of testing in Warsaw. Uh, I'm super happy with the results, however, I won't be able to fly it for a while now. My other aircraft, the amazing Carbon Cap, uh, has been uh, branded for a while as well. I'm just doing one flight a month, uh, just a maintenance check and uh, to, to warm up the engine and get rid of the humidity. So, yeah, the uh, it's been uh, really tough the last few months and uh, I hope it will be over soon. The flying is not prohibited, what's prohibited is to go out from the house. I, actually, it's been relaxed two days ago, so right now flying is, uh, is completely legal because uh, you can leave the house for sports and stuff like that. This, as well as flying under the bridge and as well as uh, landing on the pier, uh, is quite complicated legally uh, because you know uh, we need a lot of permissions from the owners and the uh, authorities. Yeah, I would love to do something like that. Uh, we did come up with two or uh, three ideas. One may be too crazy to uh, to finalize, <laughs> so we'll probably be left with the other two. It won't happen this year for sure. Uh, this year we have just a small project, uh, which I hope you will be able to see. Uh, it was going to be filled originally in May. We are now postponing it to September, so probably we'll see it in fall. So during the week, some of our viewers were asking about the situation with the Helicopter World Cup, how the authorities are managing the crisis, and if there is going to be any more helicopter events planned for the rest of this season, for the rest of this year. Earlier, we caught up with Martin Szambowski. Nawet nie zdążyliśmy się spotkać na komisji, która była planowana na początku marca. Została odwołana, zanim wprowadzono te wszystkie straszne restrykcje. W przyszłym tygodniu mamy spotkanie na Zoomie wszystkich delegatów, tych, którzy mieli się spotkać w Lozannie w marcu. Nie tyle co poustalać, bo już sezon odwołany, Mistrzostwa Świata pewnie też będą przekładane, z całą pewnością nawet. Co bardziej towarzysko rodzinie, co u kogo słychać, jak sobie radzimy, kto ile lata. Przy zachowaniu pewnych podstawowych, rozsądnych zasad, zasad zdrowego rozsądku, myślę, że można by robić bardzo dużo, wiele, bardzo dużo rzeczy, dużo, wie, dużo więcej na, niż jest nam jakby pozwalane. No. Nie trenujemy, bo jest to bardzo kosztowne, a skoro zawody są odwołane, sezon jest odwołany, 
no to też nikt nie będzie trenował. Czekam tylko, aż granice otworzą i mam trzy wycieczki gotowe do realizacji już. I śmigłowiec i tak dalej. Ograniczeniem są zamknięte lotniska, hotele i taka infrastruktura, bez której taka podróż dać się no, nie może. As we know, the US is struggling right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but the good energy flows from grounded American Airlines crew members. They injected a bit of whimsy and respect to the message of hang on, we'll be back. This craftily edited video provides an appreciation for the Americans' 785 women pilots. Let me go off my life. And, it's so tough. All right, yo, put the belly on the make a and now it's time for our hero of the week. Carlos Chapu Patolas is one of the best drone racing and aerobatic pilots in the world. This 30 year old Spanish pilot is not only famous because of his competition winnings, but also for his social media viral posts. Friends and authorities call him the best drone influencer ever. Chapu is popular because he uses tiny light and very fast drones with cameras to present their abilities in unique places such as castles, ruins and old warehouses. He uses old abandoned infrastructure to create a virtual track to do amazing freestyle flights. Most of his videos on YouTube and Facebook have got millions of views and this number is still rising. Now let's take a look at our Hall of Fame. In 1933, the most famous flight of the RWD-5 airplane began. This year, Stanislav Skarinski made a non-landing flight across the Atlantic Ocean. Before he took off for the final leg to Brazil from Senegal, he took off first from Warsaw Airport in Poland on the 27th of April. Also on the 27th of April, but in the year 1952, Swiss Air Rescue Organization was established. This is a private, non-profit air rescue service that provides emergency medical assistance in Switzerland and Liechtenstein using modern and well-equipped helicopters. Happy birthday to Leopold Earhart, born on April 28, 1957. This French famous astronaut took part in several missions as a member of both American Space Shuttles and Russian Soyuz missions. And on the 30th of April 2016, pilot Krupa died in an accident. Krupa was a famous Polish powered paragliding pilot, popular aviation journalist and photographer as well. He achieved a runner-up world championship title and unexpectedly crashed during the Riverfly 2016 powered paragliding event in Poland. And finally, happy birthday to Françoise Livot. This great French Navy fighter pilot, born on the 2nd of May 1970, became one of the best air race pilots in the history of the sport. He was the leader of the aerobatic team of the French Air Force and was 2013 aerobatic world champion. So that's all folks, we'll see you next week and don't forget to tell us about the air sports news from your region. Send them to us via email at news at airsportspromotion.com. Let us know if you've made a record flight, won a competition, or even organizing an air sports event. Whatever it is, let us know about it, and we'll spread it out all over the world. We'll see you next week. I was going to, to play a little bit with... Uh...